Welcome to this week's Shannon's Life and Style. And this week, we have Nick Dosa from the Vegas Auto Gallery here with us and sharing his experience and his life as an entrepreneur and as the owner of one of the biggest luxury car dealership in town. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Nick, um, before we start, why don't you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself? You know, how you get started and what brought you into the business. And did you start up as, you know, the owner of, of an auto dealership or, you know, your journey? Well, <laughs> and all this good stuff. It's a long, it's a long journey, but yeah, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of it. <laughs> uh, started, I'm born and raised in Canada and uh, moved out to Las Vegas about six years ago uh, to basically closer to family. And that's kind of the core of what I do is all leads back to family and, you know, having that relationship with family. So I moved out here to be closer to them. And uh, I went to go look around to see if I could find some cars. I'm a, I'm a big car enthusiast and I wanted to buy something for myself to drive. So I was looking around I'm like, wow, you know, there's not much selection. And so one thing led to another. And then I started doing some research and I checked the market out and I said, I'm going to open up here. I had a big dealership in Canada as well. So were you also the owner and founder of the dealership in Canada? I was. I started at a very young age. So you already had some experience? I did have some experience. I got my business degree in uh, the University of Calgary and then from there moved on and went into this business. And you, um, your background, you were born or are you like Indian, right? Yeah, Indian and Italian mix. I see. And so do you think that family like roots had some place in that? Of course. I mean, as you know, <clears throat> Indian and Asian families, our parents are very, very tied you know, together. Tied together, and the fundamental of helping each other and continuing on, in, in, even in the future, to help each other. Mm -hmm. So, support is a big thing. So, you were an entrepreneur at heart. Yes. Um, did you go through any difficulties when you start making any decisions about like you want to start from when you want to start a dealership to when you own a dealership? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of well, of roads course, there's a lot through. of ups and downs when I first started. You know, um, getting to learn the business, I had a good support. My mother, I watched her. I'll circle back to it because I I watched my mother create. Uh, business from from <clears throat> very small and she was one of the largest real estate agents in uh, Canada wow. let alone internationally so I saw a very entrepreneurial mindset from a young age and I knew that if I put my mind to it I could get it with support uh, so starting from a young age learning the business it was a learning curve all I knew is that I love cars but that's not enough to be an owner of a dealership Correct. or let alone it's different in business. from it, when you love something and when you want to do a business around it of course they say you know it's not work when you love what you do that's very true however when you have you to love deal with you, things that you don't yeah, love un, the un, uninterpreted things that happen you know so can you give us an example sure um, <clears throat> like for example you know uh, even in even in Vegas uh, when I first started the market here versus Canada is very different. So I've had the best of both in a sense and the best of, you know, how they've worked out and the worst of both. You know, in Canada, starting at a very young age at the age of 20, I think it was 21 when I started. Uh, starting at a young age from then, learning, people not taking you serious. You know, you, you're buying one car, two cars, three cars, and you're trying to turn a profit. Some people will come and guys that are experienced in the business will just talk you into buying something that you really shouldn't be buying and you're emotionally buying at that point so you make the mistake and you purchase high and sell low and that's the opposite of what you want to do you want to buy low and sell high right mm -hmm. so uh, taking advantage of yes a few so times. there's a lot of learning curves to oh do. my gosh absolutely financial learning curves as well and how do you manage the cash flow from the beginning <clears throat> um, learning it from a young age again I go back to the mistakes um, but a lot of people kind of get detoured when they make mistakes, they give up and they say, I'm done and I can't do this. And you have to literally go up and down. I had an example um, when I was in Canada, we had the dealership and it was rolling good and getting the ball rolling. And the gentleman that I had working with me, um, I went out of town on vacation. Well, I came back and I had one car left in my dealership. And I was like, well, what's where are you? You know, what's going on? He's like, oh yeah, I know, I'm, I'm out of town. I'll be back tomorrow. Well, what happened to all the cars? Oh, I sold everything. We'll, we'll deal with it when I get back. Well, sure enough, he had 
taken everything, cashed it all out, and left me with one car that, you know, I had to start all over again. Got robbed, basically, in a sense. Wow. It's, it's, you can trust, but you have to, again, the lack of knowledge, knowing on how to control things, that's where you learn your lessons on how to really implement the right things. And what did you do after that? I started from scratch. I didn't give up. I had a big log I had a big building. And what kept you going? I just knew I had to do it. I couldn't fail. I I could not let myself fail at that point. It's I wanted this to be my career. I, you know, really wanted to be a part of that business and, and learn it and I had a dream. I set my vision from a very young age. I manifested it out that this is what I wanna be, this is what I wanna see, this is how I picture it and I literally have work towards it. And they say you put it out there and it happens, it really does. So what do you do during your free time? You know, I know that being an entrepreneur, it, it could take over your whole life. <laughs> and um, how do you manage the stress between your life and your work? A work-life balance is very tough and a lot of people really struggle with that. Uh, I've struggled with it myself for many years. It's cost me relationships, it's cost me friends, it's cost me time with family. Um, you know, a lot of stuff basically that's happened. I would say for me, the biggest thing is learning to balance is I usually go to the gym in the morning. You have to have that time up before anybody's even awake. You have to go and you take that time, not necessarily to work out and be healthy, but it's that quiet time to prepare yourself for the rest of the day. Some people do it by meditation. Some people do it by walking, running. I do that, and then again, you go after the whole day is done, you go back to the gym or you don't go for a you walk. You start relaxing. You have, to, you have to just take that 30 minutes prior and 30 minutes after. It's mandatory. Then what if you about don't relationships? Do it, relationships are the key. I mean, that's... It's the hardest thing. You have to have the time to spend with the other person. And, right. and for finding people that will understand that, again, you know, our work-life balance is very tough. A lot of people don't really understand that demographic. A lot of people are 9 to 5. I go to work at 9, I'm done at 5, and that's it. I go home, and that's the end of my day. Well, as an entrepreneur, my work, is, like my work is on me all the time. You know, it doesn't stop no matter where I am, what I'm doing. I'll get a call at midnight from a customer and say, hey, I'm interested in this. What do you think? You can't say, hey, no, I'll talk to you tomorrow. No, because <laughs> if I say that, he's going somewhere else. Right. You right. Know? So the work doesn't leave you, and you have to learn to leave the work in a sense. So would you say that you're at where you want to be right now oh, at oh, this far point? from it. Far from it. Just in the beginning. Just this is still the iceberg, tip of the iceberg. And how would you position um, this um, Vegas Auto Gallery with all the other car dealerships in town? And where do you think it's going next? Positioning for us is um, we play in a market that's in between the franchise dealers and then there's the dealers you see on a dirt lot. We're, we're in the middle. Like We've created a basically, in its essence, a franchise motto store atmosphere environment that is just as good if not better however we just don't have to charge you that big overhead price I don't have to pay royalties to anybody I don't have to look after you know certain guidelines that I can only sell so much of this and so much of that we carry everything that is on the money when that mean and that means in the car business is everything that's priced right you know a customer may go buy a car for four hundred thousand dollars brand new they try to sell it later, they're getting 300 But you can come to us and I'll sell you the same car with 500 miles that someone already bought and you'll pay 335 It's You'll save yourself 50 or 60 grand. And then where do you source all those cars? A lot of it now is referrals, but in the beginning it was just grinding, knocking on doors. See a car online, I'd go and try and buy the car, you know, walk up to the customer. Hey. So you literally just walk up to the customer? No, you have to put yourself out there. If you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. And do you get a lot of rejections? Sometimes. But if anything, they knew who I am, and then they go tell their friend, you know, this guy walked up to me today and offered to buy my car. Really? Yeah? What's it called? What's his place? Where is it? Well, why do you want to buy your car? Well, he said he has a dealership. He wants to buy it. Give me his card. Now somebody else knows about it. It's word of mouth. It's word of mouth. <clears throat> and do you do any advertising in general? We do a lot of advertising. Um, social media now has kind of become... The big one. The big one. But then again, you know, there's a lot of people that 
or in social media, it's a younger demographic. The older generation still is, you know, a newspaper, a magazine, and they say print is dead. Absolutely not. Print is far from dead. Uh, it works for us very well because it's on, you know, people can carry it with them. They look at it. Not everybody's on their phone. Some people get tired of looking at their phone all the time. They want to just do it old school. Right. Um, let's just say that, for example, if somebody, you know, our, one of our audience, go into a used car dealership mm -hmm. um, as a professional, you know, is there <clears> any advice that you want to give them? Like a heartfelt, a heartfelt ones. Heartfelt advice in making a deal or in. I think if you can show us like all different from all different perspective. Take your time. Okay. Take your time. Compare. Don't 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 show eagerness to make the deal. Take your time, and 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 take your time from looking at the car, walking around the car, dealing with a salesperson. See, in the car business, we teach you control your customer. All my sales guys, they need to control their customers because customers come in, they're hot, they're excited, they're ready to go. If you don't control your customer, you're setting yourself up for failure and them. You have to slow your customer down. But if you can slow your salesperson down, you're taking control of the situation. It's about who has control of the situation at the time. You have to manage that expectation. So that's an insider secret. That's, that's the secret. Um. Control your salesperson, take it slow. They're moving quick. Listen, I'm here to make a purchase. If I wasn't here, I wouldn't be here to buy the car if I wasn't interested. So I'm here. That's half the battle, getting you here. Now, let's move slow. I want to look at it, take my time, enjoy the process, embrace the journey. Mm. And, and go slow. Like I said, you have to go slow. I see. And earlier you did mention about manifestation. Of course. Um, do you have any tips to share with our viewers? Yes, you have to... When you're manifesting, um, you have to eat, breathe, and sleep that vision. You have to you have to go so deep in your manifestation that, as if you're if you if you're I'll use an example. Uh, you want a red Ferrari with tan interior. Well, you're gonna take that manifestation to I want a red Ferrari with a tan interior. But that t interior, when I touch it, it's gonna feel like this. Every and, single thing to your and, and fingertips. And it's gonna smell like this, like. It could smell like anything you want to smell like, but you have to think about what you want it to smell like and, and you know, the, the way the carpet is and, you know, if there's lines in the carpet from the detail or, you know, like you got to go so into your manifestation that you don't know what point of that manifestation is going to hit, but where it starts and then it'll just start to coming fruition. Mm. The whole dealership here in Vegas starting, you got to think that I moved here six years ago, um, I started a smaller one got started had a partner and uh, unfortunately like I said you learn your lessons I learned another lesson I had to stop start again and you know here we are three years later now and we're the largest in Nevada but this is all I, mean, I can't not to be bullish but I can't say I didn't know what was gonna happen because I already visioned it I put on a whiteboard and I drew it out 50 different times and here we are, and I know where we're going next to. Do you want to share that vision? We we would like to uh, eventually uh, build a, a largest facility in Vegas for maybe about 100,000 square feet, and it'll be a one-stop shop. You come in, and if you want a car from 50,000, 20,000 to half a million, I'll have it. There should be no reason that I can't cater to you. Uh, eventually, you know, franchises are always in the near future and looking at us and, and vice versa and so maybe something franchising or maybe it, it hasn't been decided 100 percent, but the idea is there but i feel like sometimes you lose control you, got, you gotta have sense. big dreams of course right right you know um so do you have any um, knowledge or background in um, auto mechanics the do, only do mechanical you need to be very you know savvy in that area in order to open up an auto business Everything's online. You can read a lot. I mean, as a purist, if you're a car enthusiast, you're reading anyways, you know, for fun. Some people are reading Harry Potter. Some people are reading, you know, Motor Trend. It's, if you're, if you're a car person, you're going to be reading this stuff anyways. You don't have to have mechanical knowledge, no. Slightly, yeah, but you learn as you go along. So when you buy a car, um, let's just say that when some, you know, when you have your eye on the car, mm -hmm. and how do you inspect it? What is the right way, you know, that 
someone who is looking to buy a car can inspect a car and then make a judgment whether or not it's worth buying? For me, I have to buy quick. So my process is very different. If I told everybody out there how I did my process, it, would, it wouldn't even make sense. Um, from a consumer point of view, I would always, like I said, take your time, slow it down, look at everything, get the car inspected, make sure that it's, it is what it is, what you're being told it is. Not to say dealers are not honest. We obviously dealers are honest. We're here. I mean, we we help people. That's Reputation. our job. And there's that, you know, stigma. Oh, car dealers are shady. Well, no, that's not true. It's because customers come in and they <clears throat> expect that you have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in markup. That's not the case. You got to understand the industry is very different. Everything is online. You can compare everything online. If if you're looking for a Lamborghini and it's a certain one that you're looking for, you know, you go online, you type in a Google search and you start searching different websites, you're going to see that car will only be a certain amount. There's only a handful of them out there. So you know every car that's out there. So now if you go to talk to a dealer and you're at that dealership and you say, well, I know this car is out here for 350 I'm using that number because Lamborghinis are kind of that price range. And the dealer's asking 355 well, I know I can get one over there for 350 They know what that car too. Just like the customers, you know, well versed, so is the dealer. So they don't have that much spread because it's more of a finance business at this at this time. You know, the the margins are not as much. So that's what I said. Take your time, look at the car, make sure it's good, get it inspected. If everything checks out, then you make a reasonable offer. Don't insult the dealer. When you insult the dealer, it's just like they would insult you. It's it's the same thing. You want to be fair. Profit's not a bad word. Mm, yeah, because when you win, everybody else wins. Correct. You have to feel good about giving it, and you have to feel good about receiving it. Awesome. So can you share <clears> with our audience um, where we can find you and also what service you offer? Sure. Please yeah, we're... In front to everybody out sure. there. Sure. Uh, you can find us uh, on Dean Martin and Tropicana. Our website's VegasAutoGallery.com. And you can also find you guys on Instagram, right? Yeah, Instagram, Vegas Auto Gallery. Uh, Facebook again, Vegas Auto Gallery. Yeah, because I've I've actually browsed through your Instagram account because just uh, by going there, it's a, it's a it's a <laughs> eyeful of beautiful cars. Even just looking at that, it's it's very pleasing to the eyes. We, de we deal with all kinds of clientele, from high end to even middle of the road. You're looking for a car for your 16 year old. What child. collection do you usually have? A mid range from anything like 30 to 30,000 to 300, 400,000. That's kind of our area. And also man mainly is geared towards like exotic? Exotic luxury, yeah, exotic and luxury cars. And we also do planes. Gotcha. So. Thank you so much, Nick, again for being <laughs> on the you. show. Thank you very much. Thanks again for watching this week's Shannon's Life is Dial, and I will see you next week at the same time. Oh, don't forget to write to me about your thoughts for the show or if there's a place you'd like to see in the town or if you think your business is a real highlight of Vegas life and want it to be featured. We always do a lucky drawing among the viewers at the end of each episode and send out different surprises each week. No strings attached. So maybe you're the next lucky winner. Thanks for watching Shannon's Lifestyle. Don't go away. We'll be right back.